everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this tricorn fold card. Now that's what I'm calling it, and that's partly because my dad, when I showed him, he said it reminded him of a tricorn hat. And for those of you that watch Poldark, it's the hat that he wears. <laughs> and actually, when I saw it, I thought, yeah, it kind of does resemble that. And that's what he thought when he looked at it. Because I was really, really struggling to work out what I was going to call this card. Because as you can see, it's very unusual. And that's what I like to try and make. It's very unusual, kind of out there cards. So I get this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I think most of you that follow me, you do like this kind of thing. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. So basically, it's really, really straightforward. It looks really complicated, but I promise it's really, really easy. And I think you'll be quite surprised when I show you how it comes together. But you've got loads of room on the back if you want to, obviously, you know, write your, you can stamp some nice things, write your messages. And basically, it just folds down on one side, so either that way or that way, and fits in a four by six envelope. So really nice size, it's quite dinky. Now, also, you can have it that way. And it actually looks really nice if I just bring it up like so that is the profile you have and if I just grab this little sentiment if you imagine that's facing that way look how cute that looks and this is the way I'm going to decorate it for the tutorial now so this is this way which I really really like but it's got a perfect look about it, it stands you know perfectly um, on the landscape as well so yeah you've kind of got two cards in one and um, I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. These are always by accident. People ask me a lot where I get my ideas and inspiration from, but I guess maybe I should have been a, an engineer in my uh, first career, but that wasn't the case. But um, I've obviously, yeah, got something in me to be able to come up with these random designs. So yeah, this is what we're gonna make. So I'm gonna pop that one over there to one side. So I've got these really lovely gemstones that I'm gonna be using for the inside of the flowers. I'm gonna show you how to make the larger flower, just how I kind of create them. Because again, quite a few people have said, oh, they'd really like to see how I make these things. So, so um, yeah, I will be showing that. So that's the card, um, the paper pack I'm using, Forever Free. And that's the eight by eight paper pack by First Edition. And again, it's kind of really going down now. I've used a lot in this pack so that's that and then they're just little bits that we may use i'm not sure that's all done i've already done the rosette and i will link up here when we get to that where you can find my tutorial on how to make rosettes and i was really um, pleased actually i made this one with the holographic dovecraft cardstock and it's come out really really well i was a bit unsure whether there'd be a lot of cracking with it, but it didn't crack at all. So I'm really pleased with how that's come out. And you know, I really love this holographic card at the minute. So this is what we need. So for the main card base, something on that, luckily it's all gonna get covered. This is a piece that is eight by six. Um, what you wanna do is along the eight inch side, you're gonna score at two and six then flip it over and score it four, okay? By just doing the reverse scoring there, it will prevent any cracking. And then I'm gonna go through these other score lines, which you can just make out there. I'm gonna go through those in a moment. Then for those four back panels here to write your message and do some more stamping, these are one and three quarters by five and a half. So you'll need four pieces in the white and then if you wanna do white on the front as well, then you'd need six pieces of that size because it's the same size mat here, it's just we cut into it a bit. But on this, in this case, I'm doing this now in this holographic cardstock. So you'll need two pieces of this size, which is again, that one and three quarters by five and a half. So just what I showed you. And then to layer on top, this piece is one and a half by four and seven eighths of an inch. And that's gonna go on top. This is one of the sides here. Just again, look out, look at the rainbow colors that all picks up there. I love it. Love, love, love. And that's it. So that's the scoring. Get rid of the scoreboard. So back to this piece here. So you just scored at two and six and then we reversed and scored at four. Flip it back up so it's facing the way up that it was when you scored at two and six. Okay. And then with a ruler and I'm going to grab my little stylus here. At the two and six score line, that's where we're now gonna be working on. So first of all, at the two inch one, I'm gonna pop it now this way. Along this two inch score line, 
with your ruler you want to come down two inches and just put a little marker or a pencil marker if you want I'm just putting a little notch there with my stylus okay and then from the bottom again along that same score line come up two inches and again put a little wedge little marker there okay then you're going to pop it back this way and from this top left you're going to score down to that marker then from this middle four inch score line you're going to score from the top down to the middle and then from the bottom up and then from that one up. I'm going to score it all and I will have a, um, a little template. Let me just draw because I just thought I do usually do a little template don't I? So let me just draw, grab my black here. So there's our two inch score line, there's our four and there's our six. You just put little notches here, here, here and here at two inches. Okay. Now we're going to score from that to there, to there, to there, there, and then that side. Okay, so there's your three score lines, your two, your four, and your six. And then we've just come down on this one here, two inches, and then we've come up here. We just put these little wedges, and now I'm going to be scoring these score lines here. And that's what you will end up with. So. Okay, so if I just bring that up, you can see when it catches the light, there's my 2 inch, my 4 inch and my 6 inch. And then on those, on the 2 and on the 6, remember this is 2 inches that we've come down. You can put a pencil mark there if you want, but I've just put a little marker with my stylus and then I've just scored out with my metal ruler and that's creating this here. Alright, so that's what you need to have. Now we need to do some burnishing. So. What's going to happen is these two pieces here, so basically this middle one you want to fold in half, all right, because we've scored it, that will fold the right way. The two outer ones we're going to fold out, like this, and that one. And what's going to happen is, is these two middle bits, once we've done another bit, are going to fold together like that, okay? So then what you need to do is these you're going to fold down. So you're going to do create mountain folds on that one, that one, that one. And whenever you're working with points like this it's just always about just making sure they all line up. So if you find that you're a little bit out go back in and rescore, okay because otherwise your mats and layers might not fit properly and but you want that to go perfectly to the end there. See if it's a little bit off here or here you do need to kind of go back and do it again. So sometimes I say you know practice on maybe some scrap paper first if you're new to card making or this is maybe a bit more of an advanced style that you've not done before. Just have a go first, kind of play around and then you won't waste or you know ruin any cardstock. So that's the fold there, so you can see what we've created. Now when I fold those two bits together, that is the card. But obviously we need to do now all our decoration and that's what kind of brings it together, but you can see the back there. So we're going to glue all of this bit and all of this bit. Okay, so that's now where I'm going to add all my glue. Okay, so just fold the whole thing over and then just go in there with your bone folder. I'm just going to make sure that glue's spread out and you get a really nice seal. Okay, so now you can see how that's all come together and it should just stand up perfectly. What I would say now is just work it both ways, so fold it that way and then bring this piece under around that way. Okay, because that will basically just, you know, it's up to you which side you want to fold when you put it into the envelope, but that's all that's really doing, just kind of working that hinge. Because we've scored all in the correct directions, you shouldn't have any, um, any cracking, <laughs> find my uh, words there. Okay, so we now need to create this shape with these two pieces here. So first of all for your larger one here, let me just remember, I think it was one and three quarters that you have to come down. Yeah, one and three quarters. So on your bigger piece, pop your ruler on the side and just with my pencil I'm just going to mark at one and three quarters. 
on the side there and again then from the bottom come up one and three quarters like so and then you can use scissors or you can use your trimmer but you're going to cut now from where the markers are so there's my marker right across to here and then there you're going to cut right across to there so I'll just show you my scissors here like so There's that one there, so now that one should sit over the top. It's exactly the same size, and they're going to go like so now. So it looks like we've got some wings, and you can see where these are going to sit Ooh. right over the top, like so. And you should have the same border. You see how nice that looks. Then, with this one here, again forgot what I came down at so this one is one and a half it looks like yeah one and a half so again pop it on its side now also if you've got a pattern with that one there you want to do you want to cut this one side you want to do it on the right hand side like here and then this the other on your other piece you want to do it on the left so that one now I've already done this cutting was all on the left hand side of this piece of paper so this one I've got to do it on the right which is this side here, because obviously they're all opposite. If it was just plain white, it wouldn't matter. You can just cut them anyway and then just flip them over. But because these are obviously patterns and this has got this print just on this side, you have to make sure that you do one and one on the left and one on the right. So this was one and a half. So I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark there and then one and a half there. And again, that's on the right hand side. So one on the right, one, one on the left. And again, I'm just gonna cut and keep these triangles okay because you I'll show you what we can do with them and what I do with just this um, layer just the matte layer but you can also use your patterned ones as well so just keep them to one side and then again I'm going to stick this one down okay so now I've got these two pieces and they can be stuck on those panels like so then with these ones this is what I mean with the white so all of these were the size of the mirrored cardstock here so the larger size so all you can do is we want to come down one and three quarters okay on the larger ones you come down one and three quarters so one and three quarters and then one and three quarters just cut the one because again this is just white so you can flip this over like so, then grab another one, pop it over the top and just with your scissors, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit, like if, you know what I mean, they're not going to, as long as it's straight, like so, always keep with the original one, don't use the one that you just cut after because that could be slightly different, whereas if you keep with the original one, at least they're all going to be pretty much the same, but it's much quicker. So if you're using plain coloured pieces of any of these shapes then you can do this it's only if you've got patterned so now these you just have to piece in on the back so one's going to go there that one's going to go there this one on that bit and then that one on there okay so go and get all that stuck down okay so that's what we've now got it's starting to look really really good just make sure your patterns are right way up so okay so next you want to add your decoration so I mean if you're going to write on this you can just obviously turn it over and write on any side while it's flat now once you start decorating it it might become quite heavy but already look how cool that's going to look when that's in the middle so I've got my hot glue on here just because it's quite a big embellishment like I said to make the rosette I will put a little link up now so you can just see how to make them this one here I'll measure it in a second for you so you know so just lie the card down flat whenever you're decorating it obviously make sure your glue doesn't go off into the fold which mine hasn't which is fine so this rosette here is a strip of one one and a quarter width so it's one and a quarter by um, a4 or letter card letter paper length so 11 or 11 and three quarters by what did I just say that was again one and a quarter 
yeah, from the centre. Okay, so that's what you'll need to get that size. Then I've just die cut this little decorative circle and that roughly is two and three eighths of an inch. You want something that's kind of going to go over where they meet. I just think that looks nice, but it's entirely up to you. You might want to put something straight, you might not want to use a circle. Um, to make the flower, while well, that's just there, so you see already now, because that's this one's obviously going to be that way, but you can see how that's going to look, the profile it gives. So like I said, both of these styles will be, you'll see them on my blog. So I've just die cut these three here in matching colours. And then you just want something where you've got a large, like, bulbarian end. You can get plastic ones of these as well. This is just by paperbox.co.uk. Um, whatever pattern you want facing up, flip the flower over. And this holographic cardstock does work for this, because, again, I wondered how it would take with all the pressure, but it did work. And you just want to basically roll your stylus, your bulbarian, around so it's breaking down all of the fibres. Now, don't worry if it's creasing. That actually will add to the effect, because if you imagine a real flower... They have all those like little creases in them and stuff. So it does bring this kind of very flat die cut to life. So once you've done that, and then do the middle and it will start to lift up. And already you can see how that's come. Then flip it over and just push in the middle. And now it's lifted and all raised up. And just look at how <laughs> just it's gone from the, that holographic cardstock was flat and you can see all that kind of colour but now because it's lifted and it's got so many creases on it look at that amazing effect it's created and I just think that looks absolutely stunning so again flip that one over and just go around if I just bring that up you can see all the creases that it's just formed see them all and that's what you want to do um, and it's just a really easy this is just a soft piece of there was a load of earrings on this <laughs> um, you can get proper pin pads. I do have a pink one um, somewhere. I think it's fallen down the back of my desk, to be honest. Um, but this, you just want something that's soft enough. It wouldn't really work on my mat here, even though it's a self-healing mat. It still wouldn't really work. But again, flip it over. So now, if I layer that on top of that, from the flat die-cut flower to this gorgeous 3D, really dimensional flower. So again, I'm going to do this one. so okay and then I've got my wet glue there I just prefer the wet glue with flowers because you can you only want a little dot in the middle and it's quite handy so I now need to decide what order I want this because this flower I've already done exactly the same way and that's going to go up there and I think this bigger flower is going to go down towards the bottom and I don't know if that's a bit too much on top I just want to kind of stagger them yeah, that's way too much so I'm going to do the same sequence so the plain pink and pop a little bit of glue in the middle stick this one down normally so completely offset there okay yeah if I just put that on my hand you can just see how great that looks and then I'm going to pop a little bit of glue in this one. Oh, that one's just moved let's do that again like so and then this one you just want to be able to see that coming through there we go perfect and then I'm going to use one of these gorgeous little faceted gemstones and what size that was the size I used before backings don't always lift up though it really does frustrate me and as always, I always like to put a little blob of glue just to make sure that that does stay in place. And just pop it back down on your padded mat and just really push whatever it is you've used in the middle. And it just kind of work all your little petals there. But look at that, from a flat die cut piece, you get this gorgeous, look at all the dimension there little flowers and that is just using the same all the papers from there so just how you can have you know identical matching embellishments from the cardstock you use that's how I do it so now you can have it that way so you see it falls back slightly onto that piece so you can have it that way you can have it that way and you can have it that way I love it okay so 
I'm going to keep it like that because you can actually then see what I'm doing. Now I'm not going to put a actual happy birthday or whatever on this because I don't know who I'm going to end up giving it to because I've got room. You can see here I could pop that special friend in the middle and then have the flowers and stuff coming around. So I'm going to leave the inside plain. You might see that I've changed it up when I come to take the photos but at the minute I'm going to leave it plain. So I'm thinking the large really big one and then the small there. Oh. See now I'm wondering whether this is just too big. You're probably now looking at the screen going yeah it's way too big. See actually when it's like that and then that little one there or does that not look balanced? Let's have a little look. There we go. I think that's what I'm going to go for. I haven't stuck it down. I've just wedged everything because these are all, um, you know, different levels. Um, but I, I like that. I think that looks really good. So that's what I'm going to go for. So I'm just going to quickly stick all that down. Okay, so that's all done, and I can still have it that way if I want. See, it still looks really pretty that way up, or that way up, or that way up. So I'm leaving that plain because right now, <laughs> you know, until I know maybe who I'm going to give it to. But now, these bits here, these little triangles, so the holographic ones, now I should have, where's my other two gone? I should have four of all, oh, there they are, in here. Now, these should all perfectly fit. It's entirely up to you. See, I've got them just on the two back, so they've got two whites there. I haven't done them on these. If you want to do them on them, you can, but you don't really see them, even if it's that way. So two there and two there. So I've got my four. Just move them around, because they're plain. It doesn't matter which direction. But push them further down to the score line, and that way you'll get that same border that you get with everything else. There's that one, and then that one there. So if I just imagine that they're stuck, See how cool that looks. So I'm going to go and get them all stuck down. And there you go. Look at that shine. It's just, I love it. I absolutely love this. I can't, I can't stop using this mirrored card. I mean, I love that, but that just looks really flat. <laughs> as pretty as it is. Whereas that, I just think, imagine with a big number, someone's special birthday in the middle of that. I think that's going to look absolutely fantastic. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just keep that now until somebody maybe asks me for a special um, you know, 50th, 40th, 30, you know, 21st, whatever. I just think that's going to look really, really lovely. And I just bring it up so you can really see all that detail. And just see, look at the texture you get on the flowers. In fact, what I'm also going to add is some of my, this is my Spectrum Noir. And if I bring it up, you should be able to see. So it goes on and it darkens the card but when it dries, it will dry back to its normal colour. I don't know how well this is picking it up. Can you see the sparkle? There you go, look at that sparkle. Let's just pop. This will all be in my blog, but I now prefer this, I've already said, I think, in one of my tutorials to the um, Winker Stella, because this is clear. Whereas the Winker Stella's clear is gold and it actually does colour your cardstock. And there's been a few projects when I've used it and I thought actually I didn't want it to do that and it did. But now, this one, I'm going to go and do everything else. But just look at the sparkle that's now created on that flower. So I'm going to carry on and do the others and you'll see all that in the videos. But there you have it guys. My Tricorn Fold cards. Really unusual, but I think either that way, that way... Well, that way I think they are really really cool cards I think they've got the mixed up craft mark on them I hope you enjoy them and I can't wait to see your versions and your kind of take on this over on mixed up crafters Facebook page if you haven't joined please go over there and join um, it's a really lovely group now and we're nearly on a thousand um, followers I can't believe it a thousand people in that group and it's only been going about three or four months so Thank you everybody and thank you for all your contributions because it is really fun. Anyway, that is it from me. If you've enjoyed today, as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.